by Michael Rutte, Ball Brain Gallery, Ball Brain Creative, uh, speaking with Eva McGill Oliver about her book Paint Alchemy, which is a art school um, and artist processes in a book. Um, covers some of the basics to building a foundation as a good artist, what kind of um, tips you need to do with creating, the kind of rules versus tips that you need to do to create, um, and then just how to give yourself permission to be able to utilize not so many common materials to um, create. So listen in to our conversation. Good to see you. Thank you. <laughs> I became more prepared. Oh, <laughs> yay! I would have sent you one. I would. No, they. Yeah. Well, that's how it originally. They sent me one. Oh, good. Uh, good. Yeah. So, but I just forgot it last time we talked, and then, okay. and I was thinking, I was trying to think of what the funniest thing would be. Like if I had a gray wig, and you know, because so much time <laughs> passed. But it would be funny between us, so I was like, well, I'll just, <laughs> I'll just stop it. I won't do that. I yet. know. I actually had to go get the book myself and go back through it because <laughs> I kind of, <laughs> kind of forgot some of the stuff. <laughs> anyway, I'm, I'm prepared to. I think I'm prepared. <laughs> Good. And I figure with it then, um, well, okay, so... A little backstory about you and then we can talk a little more about the book and I figure we can easily okay. I figured I would just prompt you but I guess you have the you have the book on its own but I figure we can just roughly go chapter by chapter okay just to give a philosophy on things maybe that'll help you you know that'll just peak I don't know just give a little different thoughts um, okay. just summation on the chapters or whatever so that, um, um, that's a good idea. I so good, good to chat with you again. Thanks for redoing this with me. Um, <laughs> I know, I know. It's good. I need the practice, so it's good. It's good. It's good. <laughs> we all do, yeah. Um, this will help me stay on track too. So this way, I'll try not to <laughs> go off on too many tangents. Um, so a bit about you. I um, I was reading a little bit. And I guess based on from our last interview, if you wanted to talk a little bit, you went, you've been an artist for life. You you did a little um, commercial stuff. Yes, yes. I went to um, I went to school for art. So I went to University of Georgia, and I got a, a bachelor in fine arts there in drawing and painting. And um, probably Athens, Georgia, is only about an hour from Atlanta. So I ended up getting a job in Atlanta. Pretty, about a year after school, so pretty soon, um, with a fine arts and publishing company. And then I worked there <clears throat> a lot, long time. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, and a lot of, and I mentioned that too, because a lot of the exercises from that experience and working there are inspired and, um, and part of the book itself. I when I worked there, I had, it was kind of a unique opportunity because I wasn't just um, producing art that was, that I wanted to produce. I was sort mm -hmm. of pushed in other directions to, to fill orders for um, different hotels or a hospital or um, any kind of like community space. And so it was sort of pushing me in directions that I wouldn't typically go. So I learned a lot from that. And I, um, a lot of the exercises in this book are, are kind of based off that. And so that was, and then, um, oh, yes. And then after, it's probably been about six years, I um, have just been working as an artist on my own, you know, so. And so that was, that was mostly motivated by motherhood, right? Yes, so that was motivated by motherhood. <laughs> and um, it's worked out, so it has worked out because it is hard to take that step and to become mm -hmm. an independent artist. I mean, uh, you know, it's hard to, to go out on any venture, I guess, and be on your own. So it was, 
It's been a challenge, but um, a good one. It's good. Right. <laughs> well, it's it's on the path you want to take. So it's like it's it's a rewarding challenge. Yeah. As challenging as it can be. Um, yes. I know, and that's where I sort of became on my new path after I had my son. That's where I got into uh, filmmaking again and, and marketing. Do you, I guess, what would you say you really learned starting from that, either, either with motherhood transitioning to like doing your own thing or some of the challenge that you saw in your first year pursuing privately as art? An artist. Um, it actually, oddly enough, that experience sort of helped me become a better artist because I think a lot of artists, um, myself included, uh, procrastinate hmm. or to get in the studio and literally just be super focused and work. You know, you're typically because being creative, it's hard. You can't turn it on and off like a faucet. So it's hard to. It's hard to do that unless you're really pushed for time, which motherhood mm. and being a father, which it does. You, you all of a sudden don't have any time. You mm. don't, <laughs> and, you, and you have, it's very compartmentalized in little increments of time. So you just have to focus if you really, you have to force yourself to focus. And, um, and so I think it truly helped me in that way. Um, and I, I, I think because my studio was part of the house, you know, I have had studios that have been separate, you know, in separate buildings or whatever that I had to actually physically drive to. And I, being part of the house, being at the house um, and being with my son, you know, while he napped or was playing, you know, I could kind of go in there and do sort of little, little bits and pieces to sort of keep, keep a forward motion with the art. <laughs> um, and it also helps too, you know, if you have an idea or a thought that pops into your head, you can kind of, you know, immediately execute on it without, right. you know, I think that was also a benefit. <laughs> yeah. Which I'll tie into the book, <laughs> which this one, which the quote is, you're basically saying that inspiration is for amateurs, the rest of us just show up and get to work. And um, what's yeah. that? Chapter one, which I totally... I think Brian Eno might have done something similar where it's just like, it's really in the discipline of actually just sitting down and putting pen or, or, or whatever, yeah. you know, like just doing it when you're not feeling inspired, quote unquote, which is really where the progress comes. And so, right. yeah, you, you, I agree. You get really specific yeah. with your time and you get selfish and it's like, okay, I need to work. And then, yeah, it's your free yeah. time. So you got to yeah. work. Yeah, it, it, yeah, <laughs> it changes, it changes a lot, but, um, and I do agree with that too, some people I think, yeah, are like waiting around to, to have some huge inspiration when you just, it comes through the process itself, so mm -hmm. yeah, um, yes, <laughs> yeah. I just chapter. Agree. Well, it's, and it's hard to, you know, like both of us were kind of forced into that where it's like, okay, shoot, I don't have this time where, you know, before there's before kids and after where before there's like, you have all the time in the world. And then after it's like, oh, I guess I have two hours today to myself. What am I going to do? I know. So, and I remember growing up, like saying about procrastinating, I did, you get lazy because you're thinking like, it'll always be there. You know, uh -huh. I can always go draw. I can. I can do that later. I'll finish that painting later. And now it's like, there's no later. <laughs> Got to do it. That's good. So, so I'd say, so the motherhood really it motivated you to become really just extra disciplined with the practice. And then I guess more intentional with a lot of the work. Have you found, so just dedicating that time, I mean, do you just find you have greater amount of work like completed or, or, have you noticed a shift in kind of your output? Maybe it's less time, but. Yes, it's, in terms of out, output, it, um, drawing and painting, I mean, drawing, I'm sorry, drawing and doing um, paperwork and things like that, I've found, 
I think the style of doing the collage um, and then mixed with some realism or um, pretty much, yeah, most of my work is nature inspired, but um, those pieces, since they're portable, <laughs> you can kind of do them at your own, t own pace and own time, right. as long as you kind of keep, like I said, moving forward bit by bit, I think has been the same. But the painting, the painting uh, has been less because, I mean, it's just the reality of, right as life changes and, you know, I guess some new challenges present themselves. And so the being in the studio and actually physically painting kind of slowed, slowed down a little bit, but, um, you know, right. I guess they balance each other out. I think it's good as an artist to do different mediums anyway, Right. you know, continue to keep up with the drawing, you know, continue to do, you know, explore watercolors or other different, you know, you know, and digital or, film and it's just good to have a variety because it helps um it helps keep your ideas fresh too i mm -hmm. think you know just not being so focused on one um medium or one style you know kind of helps yeah refresh yeah. ideas <laughs> yeah well and then to jump back to your commercial thing and this might have been something we talked about last time but more like once it puts you in a different box, it gives you different ideas too, right? I mean, normally you just kind of get stuck into your, like, I'm comfortable doing this way, but it forces you to do other things. And then which is where the opposing ideas is usually where all the, the good stuff comes from. So, right. forcing yeah, totally. ideas. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, the bill, yeah. So that, um, have you found any challenge, or what, what has been the biggest challenges, I guess, pursuing the, the personal art career? Um, I know there's a ton, but. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> there, I mean, I think one thing, I have been an artist for a long time, and I, over the past, I guess, 10 years, or a little bit over 10 years, it has, changed so drastically the way that an artist can make a living has changed so drastically that i think part of that has been um kind of an uphill challenge for me because it's the, the certain avenues that were basically closed to me were kind of open now like doing um i didn't go to school to be a pattern designer or surface designer or work with any kind of like textile but just because of technology and, and and the way and and it's just changed so basically i an artist now today you know even with a a bachelor of fine arts you can basically go down any avenue you want <laughs> mm -hmm. and with the birth of social media the, the connecting you to certain companies certain large companies that you might not have, never be able to you know fathom getting in touch with someone there you know because of these connections now with social media you can and so it's um it's been slow to sort of figure out what my path is exactly because it's before it was very cut and dry you know you either become a teacher or you um mm -hmm. you uh become a gallery you know a fine artist and have um you sell work through galleries and collectors it just was very and, and now it's just like sky's the limit a little bit, so kind of hard to, to to know your place, to know where, <laughs> right. where you focus your attention. So, so. so almost intimidating because there's so many options, because then you can try a lot of the options, and so yeah. that's kind of what yeah. you're saying. Yeah, and it's, um, and some, you know, and some might not be the way that you're supposed to go, so it's just challenging to kind of figure out your path and to sort of use all those different um, avenues to your advantage. I mean, um, yeah, it's, it's still, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the social media thing, too, I think that the connector, there was, um, I don't know if this is real, but the guy, there was some artist that made the Juneteenth, this, like, Google design you know, yeah. they, the Google doodles and this guy just did it on Twitter and supposedly Google reached out to him. Oh, wow. But, you know, that's like a lottery thing. So, I, but yeah. it's, it's in a big, but it is in line with what you're saying. Whereas if someone wants to get noticed by a company, I think that's, 
a totally yeah. thing. Like you can, you could reach out, sort of tag them, and they're they're paying attention. I know I was, I did that with drums and um, uh, uh, Roland. You know, like where you just tag them with stuff, and then it's a way, you know, to connect. I mean, it's and for artists, I mean, I mean that's hard to do. <laughs> There's so, and uh, yeah, it's hard to to know get your foot in the door. So. And there's so many of us, I mean, you know, anyone can for more or less typically call themselves an artist, you know, and um, so it's just like, just saturated right now. There's a lot right, a lot right now, but um, so yeah, it's, and there's other challenges. But <laughs> yeah, coordinating all those is difficult. Yeah. Um, so let's just talk briefly, well, I guess you kind of mentioned it in, in building a practice and then using a sketchbook. So like how important would you say, and I guess we sort of talked about that, but just the consistency of doing some of those things where people may not be looking at the, you know, you want to do your giant paintings all the time, but in the meantime, you're still honing your practice, or I don't know, the craft and the ideas. Right, no, I think um, I did start using sketchbooks back, I mean, I think they encourage it in school, but um, I, I started it back in college and I kind of never stopped, because it's, it is sort of this safe, um, mm. you know, personal place where you can develop your ideas. I mean, it's, you know, once you do that big giant painting, it's everybody's can see it and comment on it and have opinions on it. Um, but your sketchbook is, is a place where you, you know, you're free from that, free from judgment and you can kind of explore different ways and um, you can go back, you know, you have a kind of a physical, you know, documentation of ideas you had two months ago, you can, it's, you can carry it with you, you know, when you travel, and um, I just think it's super important, and it's, you know, it's a way to help further your practice, you know, you can't, um, you know, it's hard to, to, to really take that giant canvas everywhere. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you can't, <laughs> It's just nice to to have, you know, like I said, documentation of, of and, and to even go back and see the, the thread of your work mm -hmm. over the years, you know, it's, it's fascinating too. And to revisit, you know, other ideas you had, like I said, years ago. So it's, I, yes, I'm a big advocate of sketchbooks. <laughs> yeah, I, and I think that's something I think mentally that's the easiest way for artists to like dive into them where like I know at least for me when I got back into illustration I got like a four by six you know like just the smallest thing yeah. not intimidating <laughs> at all and yeah <laughs> I don't know if you would have I mean probably advocate for the same thing like if someone's intimidated oh I want to be an artist but I can't make this amazing painting like just start as small as you can and like yeah. just fill that page and then once that's exploding out then build up first right and that's um that kind of also goes back to what you what we were saying the the, the act of just starting you know just, mm -hmm. just just trying to do a little bit each day you know just um you know not really having some huge you know massive you know idea or inspiration you just 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 your daily life you know because inspiration and it's truly it's all it's everywhere i mean you don't have to, to wait for it to happen it's you know mm -hmm. it's pretty much you know all around us so <laughs> um yeah and that's that's almost i guess more philosophically on that regard like when you were talking i feel like so many people have the good-hearted like well i just want to change the world it's like, so I'm just going to sit here until the good idea comes and then I'll yeah. fix the world that way. Where it's like, well, <laughs> you really do it through those like tiny steps. And then that's where you, you see your, your wonderful project or the thing that you really want to dive your, your attention into. And so 
Yeah, getting out the roadblock seems like getting with starting a sketchbook. That's the easiest way for people to just dive into doing, whether it's yeah. clear head or finding the next idea, but it's it's a good start for people. Yes, totally. And I, you know, a day when you're painting and it doesn't work out how you want, and it's it's that feeling. It's just it's just like defeating and frustrating. But that sketchbook sort of takes us off that sort of intimidation. You know, it's just because mm -hmm. it's so small and it's just your daily. You know, that you don't have that same sort of pressure. <laughs> so. Right. Which, and then this is all, I, we are kind of tying into the book. Um, with one of the things, too, on that, um, basically developing your artistic language, one of the things that I personally noticed, at least being able to do, one, with the smaller books, and then, two, I found it, um, there's like the, there's a creator and then the critic, and like they both have a separate life and they shouldn't like coexist in the same space is what I found to be able to create the most stuff because you know, you're like draw a line, you're like, oh, that's not good enough. You do another yeah. line, it's not good enough. But then when I learned to just spend a day creating and then the next couple days I would edit, I found I got way more done. Oh, that's a really good idea. <laughs> you, okay, well good. <laughs> I was gonna ask if you noticed that, but maybe not. <laughs> but that was, I uh, yeah. Have you thought about that or have you, have you delved into yeah. that? Because I definitely think, you know, you are your own worst critic. I mean, right. you're, you, that isn't, you know, art, I guess the physical aspect of art is it's in your head and you're trying to make it a reality, a physical reality. So I think when what's in your head is not matching up with, <laughs> The, you know, physically creating it, it is frustrating. And then that's where the critic comes from. And it's just sort of a, yeah, like a vicious cycle. So um, I do think that's a great idea because I, especially even to just organize your time, you know, because you mm -hmm. could basically be working for an hour and not get anything done. Just like, you know, but if you just let yourself go and just, I, I do, I'm, I am a big fan of just the process itself, you know, having mm -hmm. respect and enjoyment and just that, you know, you're not even, yes, you have goals and, you know, you do want to, but maybe the goal is that, you know, is just enjoying and learning from the process. So, you know, that's also part of it, you know, just, you know, not critiquing, critiquing all the time, just, um, you know, finding enjoyment and the physical aspect of doing it, you know. Right. So. Yeah, because that's really what it's about, <laughs> to be yeah. able to enjoy it, unless you're like cutting yourself off at the knees every time you do a line and it's like, no, that's, then you're missing the point. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It is. Yeah. Go ahead. No, I was just going to say, yeah, I mean, part of it is to, to, to remember that it is, you know, something you enjoy and something you like doing that is supposed to be fun. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> cool. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Um, so let's see what else. Um, design, you talk about some of the principles of design. So what do you, as far as the book and art school and then commercial you is concerned, um, or maybe school and commercial you, you know, some of the hospital and community center projects what would you say is like the balance between half of this is school and then the other half is like real world things that school doesn't teach you um i that's that's tough <laughs> yeah, that's I, because it's part of you so it's hard to know like when you right. learn something and what became what um well, I have an opinion on that, but I bet a lot of people. <laughs> <laughs>